Hi folks, uh, Colin here. How are you mate? I'm terrific, how's that? Oh look at that, he's up against the wall as well. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. That was through there, but anyway, I managed to do it. I, I just couldn't get in, but, but we're here now. No problem. Look, Kerry's asked a, a question a little while ago, so I'll bring that up again. Uh, not to do with puppies, but it is a good question because we, we started off by talking about um, uh, getting dogs from rescue homes, and a lot of people these days are doing the right thing and they're adopting older dogs. So yes. what if they get a dog that... Um, uh, how can they settle them into the family when they're bringing them home? Probably the same as settling a puppy in. But if you've got a rescue dog, what's some of the things you can do to um, help get the rescue dog uh, settled in? I've actually um, done um, uh, seminars for the rescue groups uh, right around the world, and um, and the, the problems are very similar. When you get a rescue dog, the, the dog might be, um, for example, mistreated or unsocialised. So there's a very, very high chance that that dog is going to become super dependent on the owner and then become overprotective. So this is one of the big problems that they, they have there. So when you get a rescue, when you get a rescue dog and bring it home, if you model cuddle the pup and have him in the bedroom, and that you're um, you're on track for having a dog super dependent and going to have some problems. So what you do with your rescue dogs when you get them home, um, get them used to spending time away from you straight up front. So this is some hours during the daytime. So get them home, let them settle in, crank them overnight um, in the house or otherwise um, in the garage or, or in, a, in a small area um, so they've got that comfort area. And then give them time where they can spend like two or three hours out in the yard doing their own thing. So they become independent and they also love being with you as well. Um, a lot of, lot of people that are actually rescuers that, that, that bring, bring dogs into their home, they spend 24 hours a day there and then when they try to go out, that dog can't cope with mum going away because that dog is so dependent. So next thing you have other problems. Now I've gone through some of the problems the puppies with um, dependency and, and some of the dramas have that are following around. Also some of the other problems, I'll just touch on this before I get into separation anxiety. Um, some of the problems that will happen is that when they're dependent on you, they just want to get into your scent pool. So next thing they'll go through your dirty laundry, they'll take jocks, socks, bras, anything to smell on it, and then just shake the hell out of it, sit down uh, with it, and just sit there and, and, and lay down and go to sleep. And this is also why that when mum's out um, for the day, the pup will grab something that's got your smell on it, take it to the fence, drop it down the fence and curl up and go to sleep, smelling the uh, mum's odour base while the ears are pricked up listening to the car, which I'll hear two blocks away. So that's just some of the things that can actually happen. And then you get uh, the separation anxiety, and what happens there is that the dog starts um, or start panting really quickly so he's going <laughs> like this really quickly and start pacing backwards and forward because they're stressed out then they'll either choose something that's got the owner's odour on it to relieve stress or constantly licking it this is where uh, when the owner's odour comes underneath the door uh, the dogs can actually slobber in their water bowl go back to the door there and then just slobber over it and start licking it um, over and over because the water actually traps odour and all they want to do is get that odour so when you have a, when you have a dog with separation anxiety they'll pant really quickly they'll start pacing backwards and forward then they might demolish things that's got your odour on it or they start chewing furniture. They might chew the uh, leg off a chair, they might chew the cushion on a chair which you use to sit in, it's got your smell on it, or they might just um, go to the front yard and dig a hole at the front fence and that's to keep cool or keep warm or whatever. So they'll dig a hole at the front fence because this is the next point of access where they're going to see mum when mum comes home. Um, the next thing that happens with separation anxiety these are all stress-related problems because they miss you. But the next thing that happens, they'll start howling or barking, and that's when you get the nuisance barking. So now that mum's out, the dog's there on its own, so his anxiety level is just through the roof, and then next thing he just has to hear a noise. Now, there's got separation anxiety, and he may be unsocialised, so he's already paranoid about the outside world, so now he's home alone. Mum's gone out, and he just has to hear the neighbour in the backyard, and it's just like, woo, woo, and it'll start barking and carrying on, and he's just really highly suspicious of everything that happens around him. It's all stress-related, caused by no socialisation, caused by dependency, and, and so on. Bit of a long answer there, but yeah. I think it's just going <laughs> Fantastic advice there, Gaz. That's great. And that's to do with puppies as well. Look, the barking collars, and, and you know what? This is why we're giving away one of these uh, Doi entertainment toys is because if it, when it comes to barking issues, we can use a bark collar to help retrain the dog, but then you've got to entertain the dog while there's no one home. And things like this can be uh, distractionary um, games for the dog. Uh, and things like um, the dog's breakfast might go into this, so it takes two hours or three hours for the dog to get his breakfast in the morning instead of gone in 10 seconds, and now all I'm going to do is sit there and bark because I'm missing mum and dad. All right, cheers, guys. Bye.